Welcome to Faith Baptist Church online service. Hi, it's Greg Berdine. I'm a senior pastor at Faith Baptist Church. Glad that you've joined us today. We hope it's a blessing to you. Wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, glad you're here. Um, if you'll notice in the description, there is a connection card. If you could fill that out for us and send it in to us, we would love to get to know you a little bit and see how we can meet your needs and what we can do for you. There's also an online bulletin and a place where you can send in prayer requests. We would love to be any assistance we can. Well, thank you again for being here. If the first time you've been here, welcome. If you've been here several times, welcome back. So enjoy yourself, sit back and allow God to bless you today. God bless you.
Hey, good morning, everyone. It's great to see you today. Uh, I love that we are able to be together online this morning. I, I want to remind you to uh, grab your connection card, grab your bulletin, fill out your connection card, let us know who's there, read through your bulletin, and find out just what, what's going on in our church. Uh, how, what are the opportunities that you can take advantage of today? So um, connection card, faithbaptistweb.org slash attendance. It's on our homepage of our website as well. And the bulletin is faithbaptistweb.org slash bulletin. I, I want to pray for us as we worship this morning. God, thank you so much for your love and for your grace. God, thank you that you are good to us beyond anything that we deserve. Uh, you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and we want to recognize you as such this morning. God, I pray for a number of, of groups who are just around our community. <clears throat> God, I want to pray for our teachers who are um, beginning a school year with hesitations and unknowns and just navigating still through our virus. God, um, would you give wisdom? Would you give leadership? Would you give um, perseverance and protection and safety to our teachers who uh, have to work in different ways or work in, uh, have to teach wearing a mask, uh, have to do virtual classes as long as, as well as in-person classes. Um, God, would you give them the resiliency that they need to be able to uh, go through the school year? God, I also pray for our college campuses, um, the ones in town, uh, but the ones where we, our church has students on as well. I ask that you would uh, give those college students the wisdom to know when to social distance and when it's okay not to. Um, God, I ask that you would um, give them a, a bubble of, of health uh, and protection and that you would, that you would um, be ever present on Grand Valley, on Cedarville, on Adrian College, on Siena Heights, um, at Liberty University, um, at Cornerstone, at um, just the different colleges where we we know there there are people there are people there. And so, God, we ask that you would watch over our church's college students, um, but that you would watch over the college students are here that are here in in our in our city as well. And God, I pray for those. Um, who have medical conditions today that uh, are looking for answers, that are just sore, um, that might have surgery uh, coming up. God, would you would you shower uh, those individuals with, with your presence? Would you put them in the palm of your hand this morning? And the, uh, would you be their comforter? God, I also realize there there are those who who just have financial needs uh, this morning. And, and God, I ask that you would, um, in your supernatural power, um, provide the needs that, that those who might be watching this have. Um, God, there are people with, with family issues. Um, there are people who are just struggling. Uh, and so um, there are emotional needs. God, you know, you know all of them. And I ask that you would that you would care for them all, that you would watch over those individuals who are just really frustrated with where our country is, with the virus, with um, things not being normal, with um, just so many things to be frustrated in our country right now. God, would you would you give us the ability to love well? God, would you give us the ability to to forgive? where that's needed, would you give us the ability to uh, not become resentful uh, and not become angry and bitter? Um, God, would you would you fill us up with your spirit so that we, we can be a shining light of Jesus Christ for so many people that, that need it? God, finally, I want to pray for our government leaders, um, both uh, 
at a state, national level. There's so many uh, questions and so many answers and so many things that uh, are still to be figured out. Uh, there's an election coming up and God, we, we give all of that into your hands. We know that you're sovereign over all of it and that scripture tells us the, the governing authorities are even subject to your authority. And so, um, God, we recognize that, that you are in control of our election, of our, of our leaders, of the decisions that you're making, that they are making. And so, God, we ask that you would give them wisdom and that you would give them understanding and that you would give them clarity of mind, that you would give them um, a peace with the decisions that have to be made and that you would give them a confidence uh, in the people that they consult with. And so, God, we, we want our country to be a country that glorifies you. And so we ask that you would bring revival uh, to it. And so, uh, God, I also understand that revival starts with us. And so during this church service today, I ask that you would draw us into your presence that you would teach us, that you would transform our hearts, that you would remove the callousness of sin in our lives, that you would break our hearts for the things that break your heart. And so, God, as we seek to glorify you and raise your name high during this church service, um, we declare that you are worthy. And the answer is Christ alone. And so, would you help us love you more today? Would you help us reflect Jesus better today? Would you transform our lives today as we seek to worship you? In Jesus' name, amen. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. Stone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on the cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I live there in the ground his body lay light of the world by dawn grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for i am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of christ no guilt in life no fear in death this is the power of christ in me from life's first cry to final breath jesus commands my destiny no power of hell no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the
power of Christ I'll stand. Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do.
Have you ever heard something, but you really didn't listen? I can remember growing up uh, back in the 60s and 70s, there was a great song called Bad Moon Rising by Credence Clearwater Revival, CCR. And they sang this song, and one of the lines in it was, there's a bad moon on the rise. That's where they got the song, Bad Moon Rising. But when I heard it, <laughs> I thought they said, there's a bathroom on the right. <laughs> it sounds like it. And I thought, you know, yeah, times are bad. And I guess if you need one, there's a bathroom on the right. And sometimes we hear things, but we really don't listen. I can remember in college, uh, I had a professor and he told us that we were having a test the next week. I thought he meant a quiz. Evidently, he meant an exam, as in the midterm exam. And that cost me big time. Got the worst grade in the class that I got in any course in college or high school any, at any time because I, I wasn't listening. We're beginning a new series about commitment and Jesus is calling on his followers to make commitments. Today we'll look at a commitment to listen. Uh, we'll, we'll follow this with a commitment to follow and a commitment to believe. But I think it's important for us to realize that, that we need to listen. Not only will it get us out of trouble and keep us out of trouble, but it will also be a lot of blessings when we hear, but we don't listen. And Jesus tells a parable about listening. And, and it, it, he does this in Luke chapter 8. And so let me read. It's, it's a parable. Uh, and then he goes on and has a couple of other uh, thoughts along that line. But in Luke chapter 8, we're going to discover how to listen, not what to listen, how to listen. He says, and it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. So he's preaching about the kingdom and his 12 disciples were with him. And it says, and certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod Steward, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. Don't pass this up because Jesus is doing something uh, new. Um, Typically, women weren't there to listen to the teaching, but Jesus made sure he included the women along with the men as equals to listen to his word. And so he goes on and he tells a parable. He said, when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. Sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down and the fowls of the air devoured it up. Some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground, sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. That's mentioned many times throughout Scripture. Listen. If you got ears, listen. And in verse 9, his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. In other words, they'll hear it, but they don't know what they're hearing. Now the parable is this, The seed is the word of God, and those by the wayside are they that hear. And then cometh the devil that taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. And they on the rock are they, which when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they, which when they have heard, go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they, which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. So this parable is unique. This parable tells us that we need to listen to receive, listen to understand. And he gives this parable really not about a sower and not about a seed, but about the soil. Uh, this, the seed is the Word of God, the Bible, the Word of God as it goes out. The sower was originally Jesus, but it's anybody that spreads the Word of God to other people. And they'll be received in one of four ways. 
he talks about these different kinds of soils. There was a hard soil where people had walked on it and they won't receive it at all. They won't receive it at all. Then there's the shallow heart. That, eh, it comes in, but it doesn't have enough root. It's on, on rock, just a little thin bit of soil. And so it might grow up a little bit, but it begins to wither away because it has no root. And this tells us about people that are shallow and never think really about what they're listening to. And then there's the crowded heart. That as it grows up, there's other weeds that choke it out. And Jesus says it's the pleasure of this life. It's too much. There's too much competition for the Word of God, and it just falls away. But then there's the good ground. And the good ground receives it, keeps it, and bears forth a lot of fruit. A, a hundred times what that was. And Jesus encourages us to receive His Word and understand it. Listen to it. Listen to it slowly. Listen to it often. So many times we, we read the Word, we hear the Word, and it just goes over top of us. It reminds me of one, one Christmas when <clears throat> all the kids were little, our, our, our grandkids were little. Haley and Josh came over for Christmas, and uh, Henry had a little shirt on. And uh, he walked around the whole time at a Christmas party, family Christmas party. Nobody paid much attention to it. And on it, it basically said, someday I'm going to drive a big tractor, but for now, I'll just be a big brother. Nobody paid attention to it. In other words, it was broadcast on his shirt that we're going to have a new addition to the family. But nobody stopped to read until Haley says, hey, is anybody going to look at the shirt? Sometimes it, we can become so accustomed to it that we don't allow it to get in and understand it. Well, if Jesus wanted us to understand his word, why did he speak in parables? Why did he say, I'm speaking the parables so some people won't understand? Here's what happened. At this point in his ministry, people were rejecting Jesus big time. They were rejecting Jesus and they were not going to listen. So Jesus decided that he would begin to speak in parables so that those who didn't want to understand it wouldn't understand it. And those who did want to understand it would begin to investigate and get it set up clearly. That's what the, what the word parable means is to put something alongside of something so that you can compare it. Jesus compared the kingdom of God, which we really don't know much about, to sowing seed in the ground. We understand that. So we can, a parable helps us, helps those who want to believe understand the Bible, understand God's word. But a parable for those who don't really want to get into it, it's, they don't, they don't get it. They just don't get it. And so one good question that we can ask, whether we're listening to the Word of God or reading it for our own or hearing it taught or preached is, what did I learn? What is something that I learned from God's Word? You know, one of the things you can learn from God's Word is primarily how to be a Christian, how to trust Jesus Christ as your own personal Lord and Savior. And I hope you've done that. If you haven't done that, I want you to listen to somebody's testimony about their decision to follow Jesus. And I'll talk to you about how you can make that same decision. Good morning. My name is Mitzi Castelli. I was saved when I was about 10 years old. I lived down in Detroit. There was a little girl who lived across the street. Her name was Martha. And she lived with her mom and her grandma, a couple of very scary ladies. I can remember that. Anyway, one day Martha asked me to go to church with them, and they belonged to a church called Temple Baptist. Um, now it's Northridge, but back then it was Temple Baptist Church down in Detroit. And I said yes and went with them. And um, oh my goodness, it was the biggest church. I couldn't even imagine. It was, uh, there were probably a thousand people there, lots. Um, so I was tucked in. Obviously, I wasn't on the aisle, I was tucked way in. And um, at Temple Baptist, they gave an altar call, or they, you know, you came forward to accept the Lord. And I remember when they gave that invitation, there was nothing in the world I was gonna do except walk down that aisle. And as afraid as I was, and I can still remember to this day, I was petrified, but I had to do that. So I excused myself, I went down the aisle, and I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. A few, year, a few years, a few months later, I was baptized. 
I grew up in that church. My grandparents would take me there. I belonged to the youth group and the teenage group, which was a, probably a very good thing for me as a teenager. Um, over the years, I um, was close to the Lord and then maybe not as close to the Lord. And over that time, maybe during one of the not as close periods, I met a fellow named Dave Costelli. And boy, was he a firecracker. He was not saved. And I fell in love with him and I married him anyway. And um, I was still going to church and I did my best to get him to go to church. And we would make deals to get him to go to church. And I prayed for him, half the congregation I think was praying for him. And one day he made that long walk down the aisle and he became a Christian and was saved and baptized. And as a child, you don't realize the difference that the Lord makes in your own life. But as an adult, watching that grown man make such a drastic change and become a completely different person was remarkable. And you can't watch a transformation like that and not believe that the Lord does something to you when you become a Christian and it's something for the better. Um, he and I, after he was saved, we had 20 plus years of a wonderful Christian marriage. When I lost David, um, the good Lord was there too. He, he comforted me. He, I, he amazed me with the outpouring of love from other people. Um, and to this day, he still takes wonderful care of me. I just wish you a happy, blessed Sunday. You know, God gave us the Bible so that we could have a relationship with Him. The Bible tells us that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And yet the Bible tells us that Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins. And whosoever would believe in Him would have everlasting life. To, to know Jesus is to A, B, C. A, admit to God that you're a sinner. B, believe in Jesus that he died on the cross and rose again, and see to commit your life to Jesus. If you've never done that and you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your own personal Lord and Savior, I'd love to pray for you and then lead you into a prayer to trust Christ today. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you that you have made it simple for those who want to know, and you have made it complicated for those who refuse. Father, I pray that in simple faith, people would respond and trust Jesus Christ, your Son, as their personal Lord and Savior right now. Now, if you'd like to pray this prayer, simply repeat after me from your heart. Dear God, I admit that I'm a sinner, and I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe He died on the cross, and I believe He rose again. Today, I commit my life to Jesus. I surrender everything to you. Please save my soul. Amen. Now, if you genuinely pray that prayer from your heart to receive Jesus Christ into your life, He saved your soul. The Apostle Paul tells us, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And this is a new journey for you, and we would like to help you understand the decision you made and the next few steps as you go along. So in the comment section, if you'll just say, hey, I trusted and prayed to receive Jesus as my Savior, or maybe better yet, even in the connection card that's in the description, there's an online connection card. There's a place that you can indicate that I prayed to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. Or call me at the church. Love to be able to help you with that. But if you'll respond, I'd love to send you some material absolutely free free of charge. First of all, a new believer's Bible that will help you understand what the Bible says, as we talked about here today, about not only listening and reading, but understanding it for yourself. And then I also have a little booklet, Because I'm Saved, that'll help you in your next steps to follow Jesus. But let us know. We'd love to help you in your journey following Jesus Christ. But <clears throat> the first thing we find out in this passage, from this parable that Jesus says, is we're supposed to listen to receive His Word to learn what it says. And then the second thing, we're supposed to listen to share. This is what it says right after this parable. Jesus kind of talks about another parable in verse 16. No man, when he's lighted a candle, 
covereth it with a vessel, or putteth it under the bed, and setteth it on a can but setteth it on a candlestick, that they which enter in may see the light. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Take heed therefore how you hear, for whosoever hath to him shall be given. Whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he seemeth to have. Jesus says, you know, it's, it's like a, a lamp. <laughs> it's like a lamp in how you hear. And what ends up happening is, what is a lamp designed for? It's designed to shine. You don't light a lamp. You don't light, turn on a light and then put a cover over it so nobody can see it. You have it so that it can be shared. That's why he says, those, those that hear and receive the word should share it with other people. That, that's a great way for you to learn yourself, is to share what you've learned in God's Word with somebody else. Uh, many people do it as a Sunday school teacher. Years ago, when we first came uh, to the church, there were some situations, and we really desperately needed some people to work in our children's ministry. And a lady said, you know what? I've never done it before, but I'll try it. And so Sandy Howard began to be a Sunday school teacher. She started doing children's church in Iwana, and she has been teaching children for 25 years. And she'll tell you this, she learns more about the Bible than those kids ever learn. You know, it, it, when you begin to share what you're learning with somebody else, that's what it's for. It's not just so that we can receive it and learn it. It's so that we can take what we've learned and share it with others. And you might say, well, you know, I'm not really the teacher type. Well, there's other things that you can do. You can write, you can blog, you can send little Facebook posts. You can just sit down and talk to somebody else about what you've learned. One way I'd encourage it is if you'd like to help in one of our children's ministries or Right now, you can just go in and be a helper and learn how somebody else is doing it. And maybe one day you'll be able to teach yourself what you're learning. So just like the first question that we should ask is after we read the word or listen to the word, what did I learn? What can I share? What is it that I can share with somebody else about what I just learned? And now the last one is to listen to obey. We're supposed to listen to God's Word, not just so we can learn something, and not even just so we can share it with somebody else as a, as a fact or a principle from God's Word, but we're supposed to obey it. And in verse 19, we come up at the end here where Jesus uh, has his family come to see him. It says, Then came to him his mother and his brethren, and could not come at him for the press, too crowded. And it was told him by certain which said, Thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to see thee. Listen to this. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. Jesus is not putting down his family, but his physical family, but he is elevating his spiritual family. He says, You know who my mother and brother really are? The more important part of my family are those that listen to the Word of God and do it. That's who it is. And so it's important for us to not only listen to God's Word, but when it tells us to do something, we do it. When it tells us not to do something, we don't do it. And so many times we just don't understand sometimes. I'm, I'm reminded of a story about a young man that came to his pastor. And he said, Pastor, he says, I'm just having a hard time. I'm trying, I'm trying to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to read my Bible, but I read it and I don't understand a lot of the things that it says. And even the things I do understand, I forget it. What do I do? I'm so discouraged and frustrated. I'm just ready to give up on reading my Bible. And the pastor says, well, let's do something. He says, here's a basket. It's just filthy, dirty. He said, I want you to take it down to the stream. I want you to get a bucket of water, and I want you to bring it back up here and give it to me, and we'll fill up this pail. So he says, go do that. And so he ran down there, filled up this, this um, wicker basket, and brought it up. And by the time he got up there, there was no water. He said, Pastor, I'm sorry, it, it, it leaked out. And he said, well, do it again. And he, so he ran down there, and he ran back faster to try to get it back fast enough, but it all leaked out. And he says, well, do it again. And he did it a third time, and a fourth time, and a fifth time. And the pastor noticed he started to get a little frustrated because he's doing all this work, but the water is leaking out. 
And so the pastor asked him, says, well, what, what's wrong? And he said, well, you, you've, you've asked me to go down there and get some water. And I've done exactly what you told me to do. I've, I've done that. But it's Lincoln, I have absolutely no water to show for it. And the pastor said, well, look at the basket. And he looked at the basket and the basket wasn't dirty anymore. It was clean. You see, sometimes when we read God's word and we obey it, we, we may not exactly understand it, but it is slowly changing and cleaning us up on the inside. Isn't that great? To listen and obey. Now, some people may have read this and, and looked at this and it talked about Jesus had some brothers. And maybe you've been grown up in a church tradition that Jesus didn't have any brothers. In fact, maybe you've heard that Mary was a perpetual virgin and Jesus was not only his firstborn, but his only born. Well, obviously that's wrong. These brothers were Jesus's half brothers. After Jesus was born, they had other children, Joseph and Mary did. And yet we discovered that they didn't believe in who Jesus truly was until after the resurrection. And what's interesting is Jude and James, his brothers, they eventually became believers and even wrote two letters in the Bible by their name, Jude and James. So that's kind of interesting about that. But how can you, how can you do it? You know, I think that's where, where it becomes difficult is we want to start a new habit. We, we want to obey God's word. We want to do it, but it's hard to change our habits. How do you, how do you change a habit? Well, I read a book called The Power of Habit, and it suggests to do this, is figure out an action that you want to take. So let's just use, um, I'm going to read my Bible every day. I need to do that. I'm going to read my Bible every day. Well, you need to figure out the action and then you need to figure out a cue. A cue means what's going to happen that's going to alert you that you need to do that. And it could be anything. I think one thing could be maybe alarm. Maybe one thing could be after I eat my breakfast. Another one could be, you know, once I go to work. But figure out for me, it's once I've got up and I'm gone and I sit down on the couch, I'm going to get my Bible out. So that's my cue. So when this happens, that's when, whenever I sit on the couch, I'm going to open my Bible and start reading it. Now, the third thing that you need to have is a reward. When I do that, what am I going to give myself? How am I going to reward myself so that I, it will be an incentive for me? To be honest with you, for me, it was I started drinking this um, uh, international coffee, <laughs> you know, uh, French vanilla and different kinds. And so I would get up in the morning to encourage myself to read my Bible and I'd make that coffee. That was my reward. Uh, maybe yours is getting a piece of chocolate. Maybe yours is doing something special. Getting an, I, I don't know. It could be eating. There's different ways that you could reward yourself. But that's a great a way. Not only as you read the Bible, you ask yourself that question. Okay, now that I've read it, what do I need to do? And then just schedule it in. Do it. Find that cue. Give yourself reward. And start a brand new habit of following and obeying God's word. So important. This book is so important. It has so many valuable things in it. And yet, I'll bet you even in the sermon, it hasn't really sunk in. But suppose um, I were to tell you that I know that there is a treasure hidden in, in our town somewhere of thousands of dollars. Yeah, it's hidden. It's buried. And I'm going to give you some hints about where it's buried. I would venture that you would be paying close attention, taking notes, listening intently to everything I said, because you want to find that treasure. You want that money. Well, there is no buried treasure, but the Bible has more value in your life than any treasure. And as we hear God's word, as we listen to God's word, it's important that we receive it. It's important that we share it. It's important that we obey it. You know, the word for obedience in Latin, the Latin word, it comes from the word obadere. And it means to hear. The word obedience in Latin means to hear. The word deaf, like you can't hear, actually comes from the Latin word absurdus, which is where we get absurd. So you put all that together and basically is 
if you're going to hear, you need to obey. And if you're not going to obey, that's absurd. That's absurd living. Why hear God's word if you're not going to do it? Thanks for joining us today. We hope it's been a blessing to you. We hope that it's been an encouragement to get into God's word. Listen to what it says. Read it for yourself. Discover it. It has so many precious things. So thank you for being with us. If you'll fill out that connection card online, that lets us know a lot of things about you. There's a place for you to put prayer requests and just connect with us if there's anything we can do for you. We'd love to be able to help you. In addition, um, we'd love for you to consider giving a donation to our church to help us in our ministry, both online and in our community. We're doing a great job of that, and so many people in our church have been faithful. One area that we're especially cautious of is helping people understand what missions is all about. We have some great missionaries. They're doing a fantastic job. And if you'd like to earmark some of your gifts toward mission, every dollar goes to our missionaries to help them do the work that they have to do. And we're going to be closing a word of prayer. And then, and before that, we're going to hear from one of our missionaries. So again, thanks for being with us. We hope if you get a chance that you come out and be with us in our public service. But even if you can't, continue to follow us online. If this has been a blessing to you and you're watching this either on Facebook or YouTube, share it with the people that you're friends with so that they can be blessed as well. So God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Hi, hey, welcome to the Caribbean and Rick and Fran Schuster's ministry. Hey, we want to highlight two of our four ministries with you right now. What God is doing right now because your help and because of what you're praying about uh, here in the Caribbean, mainly the Bahamas and in Haiti. God bless. Pastor, look before you go, uh, with, the, with the program you have, the Boys Club, how many boys over the last uh, 23 years have you think you've mentored together? Well, over the past 23 years, on a Saturday morning, near 3,000 boys. On a Saturday morning, at the various conferences we've hosted, probably about 20,000. So in total, we've been able to reach uh, probably about near 30 to 40,000 young men with the gospel. And say in the next uh, three or four years, what, what is your, what's your goals? Our goals is to number one, get the center completed, and number two, implement all of the programs that we need, and number three, continue to partner with all of the persons who can be able to help us uh, take this gospel to where it needs to go in the lives of young men, and hopefully God even turn around these young men's lives, that they themselves can continue to be a part of the program and even expand the program and go and do it somewhere else. Well, we hope that was a blessing for you, and uh, God is really working in, in Freeport. God's working there in Haiti with our orphanage and our school there. 
I wish we had time to share uh, the other three countries, but we'll do that another time. God bless, and thanks again, and keep on serving God. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we just thank you for today. We just thank you for all you provide and all your blessings. Um, we're just thankful that uh, we're able to get together in person and online um, and to just worship you and praise you. And so we just, uh, we're thankful for the message today. We're just thankful for all of God's blessings. Um, and we pray for um, unity in our country. Uh, we just pray that, uh, you know, um, the Christian community would come out and um, be a shining light and um, make an impact for God uh, in our communities uh, uh, around the country and around the world, um, changing lives, bringing people to Jesus. Um, so we pray for that, pray for our missionaries. Um, we just thank God um, for all his blessings and all he provides and just pray that uh, God would just bring us back again um, so we could worship and glorify him and just pray that all we do would just be to the glory of God and um, just pray that God would continue to bless us and keep us safe and um, pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.